Pirate Switchy Mob, Part 2, A Festival of the Dead. Mischief Night. In many areas of Europe, especially in Scotland, Halloween also is known as Mischief Night. The holiday gave pranksters license to commit practical jokes without too much fear of retribution. And pranks or tricks range from the harmless to the downright dangerous. Favorite, favorite tricks were to take someone's door off its hinges and despise, deposit it into the local river. Or to place turf over a chimney so that a house would fill with smoke. One prank from the Scottish borders tells of a prank played on a farmer who was a notoriously heavy sleeper. Knowing this, a group of young men from the town broke into his house at night, took the sleeping man bed and all, and just deposited him at the top of the church tower. Of all the European countries, the Halloween tradition remains strongest in Scotland and Ireland of the Celts. Despite the fact that the Celts were subject to waves of Roman, Saxon, and Viking invasions, the tradition of Samhain, even in its new guise as Halloween, remains strong. So strong was the orig original tradition that according to Nick Rogers, Professor of History at York University in Toronto, the Irish Folklore Commission of 1941 to 1942 found that in some parts of Halloween in Ireland, Halloween was still being referred to as Samhain. And many of our present day Halloween costumes are based on Scottish Irish folklore traditions. Pumpkin jack o' lanterns, for example are deprived from a story about a young Irishman named Jack, a rogue of a man who drank, robbed, and womanized. One night on his way home, so the story goes, Jack was confronted by the devil, whom he managed to trick into climbing a tree. Jack then starved the image of a cross, or carved the image of a cross on the bark of the tree, trapping the devil up in the boughs. In return for letting him down out of the tree, Jack made the devil promise never to take his soul. Afterward, Jack carried on with his sinful life, and when he died, he was refused entry into heaven. But because of his, because of his promise, the devil would not let Jack into hell either. The legend has it that Jack was thus banished to wander as a spirit forevermore. But the devil, taking pity on him, gave him a burning ember to light his way, which Jack placed in a hollowed out turnip. In Ireland, this story was told often around Halloween, and people would make their own turnip lanterns in memory of Jack. When Irish immigrants reached America, however, they found that pumpkins were much better suited for this purpose. American Traditions In fact, it was the waves of Scottish and Irish immigrants in the 19th century that firmly established the custom of Halloween in America. After reaching these shores, Halloween grew. No country celebrated the festival quite like America. And no country spends more money on it. We Americans also developed our own traditions to complement imported European traditions. Most obviously in the custom of trick or treat. This custom is a purely American invention. Although how it actually developed is a matter of some speculation. One explanation is that it developed that it developed from an age-old begging tradition. One of these 
was a tradition of sowing, which involved the poor members of a community gathering at the start of winter and going from door to door, offering to pray for more prosperous families in, each, in exchange for soul cakes, big biscuits of wheat and honey that they could store and use to sustain themselves through the cold months ahead. It is possible that trick-or-treating developed from this tradition, combined with European Halloween beliefs and practices into a fun game for children. Perhaps a more plausible explanation is that the custom of trick-or-treating is an entirely modern invention that only developed in the 1930s. As Professor Nick Rogers put it, in an attempt to clean up Halloween's rascality and vandalism, according to this theory, gangs of American youngsters were taking the old European tradition of mischief night to extremes. People were starting to get hurt to try and counteract unacceptable behavior associated with Halloween, various communities started to organize youngsters into safe activities and encourage groups of children, accompanied by adults, to dress up in costumes and knock on doors to receive, to receive treats for their outlandish get-ups. This kept children under adult supervision got the whole community involved in the festival. Today in America, Halloween is still celebrated as the night when ghouls, ghosts, and witches come out, just as it was celebrated in Europe in Celtic times. Leslie Bannatine, author of Halloween, an American holiday in American history, says there are festival has much in common with the cele ce celebrated by early Celts. How Halloween is imagined today is very similar, similar to how it was in Celtic times. It's a night focused on supernatural going on, where we can travel into dark and imaginary places. So this year, after all the fun and games have ended, all the candy has been eaten, and all the costumes have been packed and put away. Take a look into the night sky, and remember that our Halloween is the culmination of two millennia of multicultural traditions and celebration. This is a story that I got a long time ago. There's also things like festivals of the dead around the world, how they do it in Spain, Italy, China, Mexico, Japan. In the time-honored game of bobbing for apples at Halloween has delighted children for generations. So, that is my little story of where Halloween Festival of the Dead originated. And it's a story that I keep in my book of shadows. I hope you enjoyed it. And I wish you all a very, very happy sound. Bye. Oh, and I have to fix something. In the first part, it's 601 A.D., not 6001. I'm sorry for the misnumbers. Enjoy.